We believe that all men are created equal, yet many are denied equal treatment. Every nation must now develop an overriding loyalty. Hello, Troy Shaw here on the Diversity Television Network, and we're here today with an author. His name is Michael J. Holland, and he has written a book, a book entitled, well, actually, let me tell you a little bit more about the title. I mean, it's, it's a title that many may find to be very, um, how should I say, very outlandish in some regards and very truthful in others. The book is entitled, Why Husbands Kill Their Wives and why boyfriends beat up their girlfriends. And with that being stated, let's welcome to the program, Michael J. Holland. How you doing, brother? Hey, how you doing? All right. All right. Now, I mean, <laughs> my first inkling, once I look at the cover of this book, well, first of all, you know, you see the, a very attractive woman on here who is in a bridal gown. Mm -hmm. And then you go to see the title, and it says, Why Husbands Kill Their Wives and Why Boyfriends Beat Up Their Girlfriends. I mean, it's a pretty inflammatory, uh, uh, really pretty inflammatory title. Tell me, how did you even come up with this title? I don't know. It just, it just came. I, uh, why Husbands Kill Their Wives and Boyfriends Beat Up Their Girlfriends. It was something that I think that was going on a lot. Not, not necessarily husbands, just boyfriends all in general. Mm -hmm. I was in a bad relationship. That's the woman you see on the cover is my ex-wife. This is your ex your ex-wife. Ex-wife. We okay. now legally divorced okay. about a couple of weeks ago. All right. And uh, in the course of marriage, you go through a lot of difficulties and stuff where there are verbal abuse, where there are physical abuse. In this case, I wasn't the one beating her up. Mm. She was the one trying to beat me up. Okay. And uh, it was one particular time, I guess what created the title would be before I knew I was gonna write a book. We had gotten into it and where she had spit on me mm -hmm. and uh, she had hit me and I said, this is why these men are killing you guys just for stuff like that, because, you know, I'm not going to hit you back. And uh, so I think subconsciously that stayed, you know, dormant inside me. And then when I decided to write the book, that name just happened to come because not only desired that I wanted to, to, to hurt her, there were so many men out there hurting their girlfriends and wives. Equally, there were so many women out there hurting their, you know, husbands and their boyfriends. But see, a lot of people may look at the title of this book and say that this man is actually trying to justify the killing, the, to reason why men do this. And obviously there is no justification for anyone hurting another human being, but the title of the book gives off the impression that, I mean, this guy is trying to justify the killing of women. Well, if that passion is the first thing that the person who, re who sees that, then that's good. From a writer's standpoint, I'm glad, because then maybe it would force them to use that same desire to open it up. And I think once they open the book up and they will see that by no stretch of the imagination am I justifying murder. It is wrong. There's no stretch of the imagination that I am saying that a man should put his hands on a woman. Mm -hmm. It is horrible. Mm -hmm. However, the fact of the matter is, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, the title wasn't created to, to prompt their interest in opening the book. The title was created because it just, it just happened. But when you do read this book, you will see that, um, that, uh, that these things is happening. And from, mm -hmm. by no stretch of the imagination am I an expert. Mm -hmm. I only use my life experience and I bring in other uh, uh, experiences of others to support my point of view of why I think this is going on. In many ways, I believe it is an epidemic because a lot of men will not openly tell anyone that their wife is, 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 is verbally or physically abusing them. Yeah, you do use excerpts, I should say, you use other quotes and other uh, materials, if you will, from other past cases, uh, the Lacey, uh, Lacey Pearson, Peterson. Uh, Peterson case yeah. I see in here. But I also see some things in here from um, uh, Susan Smith, who killed two of her own children, mm -hmm. and also Yates, uh, and, and uh, Andrea Yates, who was convicted of killing her children as well. I mean, you do have angles within the book that talk about killing in general. W w why? Um, it has a lot to do with the fact that I do have two kids, and, and one of the reasons that it was difficult for me to, to, to divorce my wife or to just leave her was the fact that I wanted to be in my kid's life. I know that the way the justice system is set up that it's very difficult for a father to get custody of his kids. That angered me in the process of writing this book. I felt that, or feel that the women of yesterday are not the women today. Mm -hmm. And I use these Smith and the Yates and other women of today who are killing their kids, but yet the court system see no reason not to take the kids from them and give them to the father or the husband if he so desired to do that. I didn't want to have this book about an angry 
man who's writing about how horrible things are. But Michael, that's what the impression that some people may have for just looking at this. Of course, they, you would, you, your, your comment would be, well, read the book. But their impressions from the beginning is like, well, you know, this man is very angry at women and gives may give the impression as well that you're angry at all women. You know, that's good. If they feel that way, sir, to make them get passionate enough to to want to call me up and get that one on one dialogue about that. I mean, I'm excited. This is why I will not turn on any interviews. I will not turn on any emails that I get because they are able to get in touch with me through that. If they feel that way. Good. The reality is some people are angry. Some women are extremely angry. Some men are, are, are extremely angry because this is happening. Mm -hmm. And if I created some type of manual from my personal experience to be able to explain to them from my experience why I think this is going on, then that is going to do what I want it to do, which is to create dialogue. Until we are able to solve this problem, we got to stop reacting. Mm -hmm. And reacting, the reaction is normally, as you said, some people are going to look at this, going to say, this man is justifying murder, this man is angry at women. These people that initially feel that way, then I will ask you to ask yourself, why do you feel that way? Okay, well, Mike, in the book, mm -hmm. you do talk about standing over your wife. Mm -hmm. You do talk about contemplating mm -hmm. after all of the abuse that you've gone through. That's correct. Contemplating killing her. Absolutely. One would say, and one would ask you, no, I'm just, I'm going to ask sure. you. Sure. Are you a potential murderer? You know, sir, I'm, that's a great question, and it's, and it's been asked to me before. I'm sitting here today because the fact of the matter is I didn't kill my wife. But also the fact of the matter is I thought about it on many, many, many occasions where I found myself hovering over her while she was sound asleep. But for some reason, I didn't, I didn't kill her. And because I didn't kill her, I'm sitting here. But the reality is that if I did kill her, it would have been a national story, especially if she was pregnant, as most of the stories seem to become center stage. So my question would be how many other men or women, but men, thought about killing their wife or their significant other. And that is, when they, that is when they should come to the conclusion there is something wrong. That is when they need to find that woman, find that man, sit down and say, honey, we got some serious issues. And you got to listen to me this time because you are unaware. But last night when you were sound asleep, I hovered over you and I really thought about killing you. That means that there's something going on deep down inside of me. Let's talk about it. The problem that we have that I think one of the reasons that some men are killing their wives, men hate it when you disrespect them. Like women hate it when you're not loving them enough. True. But you know what? What I'm learning is for past disrespect. We call it verbal abuse. See, anyone can disrespect someone. It happens all the time. It's part of getting to know one another. You're going to disrespect her and she's going to disrespect you. The problem is when we verbal abuse one another. And that's the issue. I really believe a lot of these men and women, but a lot of these men are snapping and are killing their wives is because it's not about disrespect. It's this verbal abuse. My wife, little woman. Now, when you're constantly telling me I'm stupid or constantly telling me when you get in an argument and you hitting me or you pushing me or you spitting on me. You know what? Everybody got something you call a bad day. Fortunate enough, that bad day didn't end up me looking out at her puddle of blood or on the other side of her snapping and her killing me. But wouldn't a reasonable person, Michael, just get the hell out of that relationship? <laughs> wouldn't a reasonable person, if your woman is beating you up, is spitting on you and you don't want to hit her, wouldn't a reasonable person leave that situation? In a perfect world, sir. But let's look at these reasonable persons, okay, people that choose to deal with it. Like when you grab a woman who's been beat and she continued to go back to that or a man. This is what's going on, sir. We're not in a perfect world. A lot of people are forced to stay in that situation because they grew up in that situation. Mm. I find myself thinking, okay, did I, did I, did I, did I, did I grow up around something like this? Why won't I just leave? And then, but I wasn't the issue because I know my story. What about everybody else? And as I interviewed people for this, for this book, I learned they wanted to leave. But sir, you talking, you talking your relationship, you talking history, you talking, it's too many emotional feelings that you, you, you talk, especially if you're a man of the man of, of faith. You believe in maybe God can make this work. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And maybe she, you know, the deal is when you get a partner, it's supposed to be through thick and thin. Now, yes, be wise enough to get out. But, sir, the reality is this. Too many people are staying. And these people are staying because it is not easy. It's easy for someone outside who's watching this program or watch an Oprah or Donna, I mean, or, 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 um, Dr. Phil, say, I would leave. No, you wouldn't. 
Yeah, you point you point Oprah out in your book and Dr. Phil as being individuals who perpetuate the the stereotype that all men are bad and that men uh, are relatively aggressive and don't understand women. Uh, what, what was your whole meaning to try to incorporate Dr. Phil and Oprah Winfrey in this? Well, well, well I could have spoken about any talk show host. I happened to choose Dr. Phil and Oprah because Oprah, of course, being a woman and Dr. Phil, of course, being a man and and breaking them down both. More specifically, I don't think I attacked Oprah as harshly. I believe that when I first started watching Oprah, her early shows, mm -hmm. uh, when first watched, one would think that it was more uh, about what men were doing to, mm -hmm. to victimize women. And so warrant, because Oprah needed to express that she's a woman who was victimized. And of course, she wanted to keep her quest of letting women know that, hey, you're not in it by yourself. Yeah. Dr. Phil, on the other hand, uh, of course, is probably more personal with him being, number one, a man, number two, a doctor. And I feel if you got Oprah, and Oprah's in a class by herself. I admire her work. I see what she's doing. I think she's more of a balanced talk show host. But when you deal with someone, say like Dr. Phil, as I said earlier, who's first a doctor, mm -hmm. I mean, first a man and second a doctor, you would think that when you deal with a victimized woman who, who should be telling her story, that's great. But there's another side to that story. And you being a man, you would know what it's like to be involved with a woman where there are, a lot of the verbal abuse is taking place. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would challenge him more so as opposed to be more concerned about his audience base, which mm -hmm. are women viewers, and dig deeper into the victim to, un, to help us understand what is she possibly doing wrong? Because that is what we, as the audience, need to see the other side. Not just focus on this man beating this woman up or this man is horrible. We understand that, and he's wrong for that. Mm -hmm. But what are you possibly doing? Once okay. you dig into that, then we're able to say, wait a minute, even though we don't justify it. Wait a minute. Let's look at the other side. I mm. put that weight more so on Dr. Phil because he is the man and okay. he is the doctor. The book is called Why Husbands Kill Their Wives and Why Boyfriends Beat Up Their Girlfriends, written by Michael J. Holland. Now, Michael, where can people go out and find this book? Uh, you can get it online, uh, whymenkill.com. That's why, W-H-Y, menkill.com. We are actually selling it directly through the website. I, as a author and now uh, publisher, I want to get more uh, 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 control of the demographics. I want to see who in, who in fact is purchasing the book. I mm -hmm. want to have access to be able to contact them per through email to see their, their thoughts on it uh, to make sure that it's out there. It's not about the money. Please stress that. If that was the case, we'd be in Barnes and Nobles, we'd be in Crown, we'd be in Borders. Now you can go and order the books from them. They of course got to call us up to get the books to you and that's how they've been doing it in the past, at least the people who bought it that way. But we really want to con somewhat control uh, 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 the demographic to get a feel for that. And also, I hope you read between the lines. Most authors, first time authors, and even publishers, the first thing they want to do is make money. <laughs> you know, if you realize that I'm making, we selling the books purely through uh, the website, mm. you, hopefully you can see it's not about the money. It's about creating a dialogue about these issues that's going on, because until we can cons completely talk about it, mm -hmm. it will continue. And again, the, bu the book is entitled Why Men Kill Their Wives and Why uh, Boyfriends Beat Up Their Girlfriends, written by Michael J. Holland. You'll be able to view this on the Focus on Diversity website, but also you'll be able to see it on the Diversity Television Network. This is Troy Shaw signing off, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you. All right. We believe that all men are created equal. Yes, many. Every nation must now develop an overriding loyalty.